Hi, Joel from JST Woodcraft here. Thanks for coming to my shop. I thought I'd take some time to walk through uh, my journey in resin casting, uh, specifically focused on the types of resins I've used in the past, what I've settled on and why. Try to give you all some uh, people who are starting new with this, uh, kind of some experience there and some understanding of what you're getting into so that you don't have to go through all the hard lessons that myself and a lot of us who cast have done. Uh, take some time to walk through each one, the upsides, the downsides, uh, the behaviors of the products and whatnot. So I hope you find this information useful. And again, thanks for coming. For me, in my pen making journey, there came a time where I wanted to impart some of my own creativity, um, some of my own design expertise with using computers and graphic arts software. So really the only way I felt like I could do that was to get involved in resin casting. There's many products out there, there's a lot to look at. Uh, I've had exposure to three, uh, actually four and I've had really good luck with most of them, uh, but I have certainly settled on one. So what I wanted to do is just take some time and go through this journey. When I first got started, I was very uh, involved with Penn State Industries and buying all my stuff from them. I didn't know of all these other wonderful places and, and forums on Facebook and whatnot. So in flipping through their catalog, I came across their Casta kit. This really seemed to be the right product. I mean, you had stoppers, you had molds, you had gloves and stirring tools, and really looked like everything you needed. And it was. It was. It was a great way to start. What I learned real quick was that this stuff was a polyester resin, and man, did it stink! I mean, even doing the work in my shop, which was a garage attached to my home. This thing would permeate our house. Uh, it was not good for the marriage. The family hated me every time I cast it. I had to create a method of keeping the castings in a sealed container so that I could keep the odor down. The other thing that I ran into real fast, being in New Jersey at the time and beginning this process during the winter months was that it will not cure under cold conditions. So I would cast out in the shop and I would then take the sealed container in and I would set it on top of my furnace. Something inside of me said this just wasn't a good idea. You know, using the top of a furnace that was heating my home is probably not the best place to uh, be putting flammable or potentially flammable resins and materials. So really needed to find something different. And in searching Facebook discovered a lot of the casters out there were using a product called Illuminate. So I did some homework and came up with quite a few options out there uh, with regards to Illuminate and what people were using. And so I settled on the Illuminate Clear. And one of the things I had really learned uh, with working with the previous polyester resin was kind of had all the time in the world to get your tube settled and everything packed up and, and done the way you wanted to do things and you also could for the most part do your work without a pressure pot. In the Illumilite world didn't really work that way so I went about acquiring a pressure pot and getting everything wired up in my shop to for an air hose and air compressor and all those types of things but what you learn really quick is with a seven minute open time, meaning you have about seven minutes from the time you've stirred this mixture, put everything in your mold and getting it in the pressure pot uh, before it starts to harden. If you are still stirring and it starts to harden, it becomes almost impossible to work with. Very difficult to have a proper casting without bubbles and so on and so forth. So you have to develop a very w quick way to move. So when you start adding colorants and all these other types of things, you got to be quick. 
And I found, quite honestly, every time I did a casting or I did a pour, it was, it was stressful. So then I came upon a little light clear slow, which almost doubles the amount of open time you have when working with these types of things. So this was it. I really thought I had found the solution to all of my problems. Boy, what a difference a few minutes made. Was really able to work with all of the ancillary materials that I had. Uh, lots of problems seemed to go away and I was really enjoying working with the product. But I still had issues from time to time. Uh, those issues were bubbles, mostly bubbles that would end up on the seams of my labels. Couldn't understand why or how the entire casting could be crystal clear, but these tiny little bubbles would hang out right around the labels. Wasn't often, uh, it was probably somewhere around maybe one out of every 10 castings but frequent enough to, uh, to be annoying. Uh, the other thing with the Illumilite products is you know, they were done in four hours, which was great. When you're producing a lot of volume and you're doing a lot of work for a lot of different people, being able to get something in the pressure pot, get in it cast, and out the door, uh, sometimes in the same day was fantastic. But these little tiny bubble things were just driving me nuts. Another thing that started to show up was hazing right around the label. Everything I read, all the research I looked into, really pointed to moisture. And with Alumilite, moisture is not your friend. Uh, too much in the product, or with like water or whatnot, the product will foam. Uh, just a little bit, you can get hazing. Uh, also, mixing has to be perfect. Without that, you can get white striations and anomalies within the resin as it cures. So anytime there's humidity outside, you've got an air compressor going on, you're putting air under pressure, uh, you're going to have moisture in the air. And when air pressure is released, the temperature of the air dramatically drops, causing moisture in that air to come out and you get fogging, you can get dripping, all these things happening within your pressure pot that you can't see and causing problems. A lot of times it would just create a little haze at the top of the blank. No big deal, that's going to end up on somebody's shop floor anyways. Uh, but it just doesn't look well and if you're ever taking these products to a retail environment, certainly not something you want on display. So I invested in products to assist me with removing moisture from the air uh, up to you know, spending a couple hundred dollars on different types of products. There are certainly dehumidification devices out there uh, in line with your air compressor that work. They're incredibly expensive. I did start dehumidifying my shop and pulling the air humidity in my shop down to roughly 40%, which is pretty dry. And the problems went away to some degree, but they were still there from time to time, still quite annoying. Then the big change for me, moving from New Jersey to Florida. And I'm sure everybody out there knows humidity in Florida is just a fact of life. It is next to impossible to deal with in a shop environment. The dehumidifier would run 24 seven and these types of problems with the hazing began to increase and it began to increase to the point of it not being worthwhile for me to cast certainly not to cast for others lots of failures lots of reaching out to customers and apologizing hey i'm gonna take another day to get your product shipped or another day after that uh, costing me a tremendous amount of money uh, you know taking all the profit and all the joy out of what i was doing so i needed to find something different and as I was doing my homework and just kind of reading, stumbled upon Royal Palm Resin. Could not hear bad things about this product. Uh, everybody was ranting and raving about how they were using this outside of a pressure pot and how they were having such wonderful results. So certainly something I needed to take a look at. The product comes in two different chemical formulations. One is the original formula and one is the thin formula. I settled on the thin formula, figuring that the thinner the product was when I started my castings, the more likely the bubbles would float to the top and would have less issues. 
having a pressure pot figured putting things in the pressure pot couldn't hurt uh, so that turned out to have really good outcomes the bubbles around the seams disappeared the haziness around the labels disappeared my failure rate probably went up to maybe one or two failures per 100 150 castings which is just phenomenal and I will tell you that the failures um, when using Royal Palm for me were generally when I did something stupid it was rarely a uh, outcome caused by the product itself or some type of environmental condition that I was dealing with now the Royal Palm present uh, resin has <clears throat> a long open time it, you can work with it depending on the temperature outside somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour so it is wonderful you can take your time you can be methodical about getting your castings ready and doing the things you need to do uh, if you're looking at doing color casting where you're going to blend colors uh, but you don't want the colors to mix or separate or not separate or be separated i guess uh, you you do have to wait a while I mean, you do have to watch the temperature and constantly monitor the viscosity so that your pour comes out the way you would like. Generally speaking, I wait 24 hours to take my items out of the pressure pot. So it does slow down your process. Same day shipping is just not a reality for me anymore. Uh, but I find the wait uh, is, is worth it considering the consistent and predictable outcomes that I have. I do have a couple pressure pots so I can move back and forth and do quite a bit of volume and it was just a really a workflow thing for me to learn um, how to get things out the door. Slight education with my customers letting them know that I've changed the product. Um, my delivery times are going to be maybe a day later. Nobody seemed to really be bothered with that. Uh, they were thrilled to stop hearing from me about problems so it was really 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 good thing to do uh, no odor with the royal palm uh, cost is similar within a few dollars i think of the alumalite and it's just where i settled out so for about the last year and a half or so maybe even two years this is the product that i've been using uh, it's given me great outcomes i think it's a epoxy based resin um, epoxy based, urethane based, all these different products I'm not quite sure I, mean, I don't totally understand the difference between them chemically uh, you know, physically you do have to be careful with the Royal Palm and the types of molds you put it in it is a sticky product if your mold material is not designed for resin that's epoxy based it just like epoxy it sticks and it sticks bad and I've seen guys pour it in mold and trying to demold they just tear their mold apart so make sure wherever you're buying your molds from or what you're using to make your molds that it is compatible with this type of resin you're using the proper types of release agents and you will have wonderful outcomes I hope you all have enjoyed this video it's a new format for me with the voiceover I know I've got a lot to work on here, but if you have any questions, comments below, like if you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful day.